YouTube, check out what I'm working with today. This is a brand new 2016.5 Ford F-150. This thing is friggin' gorgeous. But it has one problem. got no backup camera nothing up here nothing down there so let's take a look on the inside of this beauty and see what can we do all right so I think I'm gonna be straightforward and honest I'm liking this thing a lot more than my Chevy oh this thing is nice for a work truck Oh, nice. Let's play around with this. I don't often get to play with new vehicles, so how do you? Maybe it's this button. Oh, off road. Check that shit out. Tells you how the steering wheel is and your angle of approach and all sorts of other goodies for off-roading. That's nice. What's this, the radio? Oh, this thing's got Bluetooth. Okay, so we have a few options here. And if you are the owner of a 2016, 2017, probably even 2018, I don't think Ford's gonna change it out by then, if you want to install a backup camera into this truck, you can either, if you have this particular head unit, you can wire it to that little screen. And I'll tell you the pros and cons of that. Or we can just put a new mirror on here. And I'll tell you the pros and cons of that. So first, pros and cons of a mirror. Pro. It's already up here. When you're backing out of a parking spot, naturally, you should check your surroundings. Check the mirrors, check the rear view. And when you have the screen that comes up right here, it kills two birds with one stone. You don't have to worry about something being behind this vehicle. And in this case, looks like they got a lot of shit back there. So I think that would be the best approach. Um, the cons to that is people say that it doesn't really look factory since you have a screen down here. And my response to that is, well, it looks probably more factory than you go this approach. Because if you go this approach, you're going to have a backup screen the exact same size as you would up here. And the disadvantage is, and in this situation, this is a commercial vehicle, when you have drivers backing out of spots, they sometimes forget to check those mirrors and they solely depend on that backup camera. And my biggest gripe with backup cameras down here is it's too habit forming. You get used to the habit of instantly looking straight down there and you forget to check around you. So that's that's a disadvantage. Um, the advantage of doing this is, yeah, it's gonna look way more factory. And if that's the approach you wanna do, it's really not too difficult. You just come up here, and pull this off. It's just a little rubber mat. And there's screws and from there it'll let you access this you can take all this apart it's not it's not too difficult and I can almost guarantee you there's other YouTube videos for that especially in this model truck um, I think we're gonna go with the approach of the rear view it's cheaper this is gonna cost us about hundred dollars total with the mirror and the camera in the back 
versus this approach to getting a kit that comes to this, it's going to be about $500, $500, $600. So just alone, if you do the math, I'm going to go with that one. And I'm going to show you guys now, step by step, how to install it, how to wire it, and what to do. So there's no surprises when you do it. Here's the rear view camera that we are going to be putting into the truck. What's really nice about this particular kit is you don't have to order this if you use the, uh, the mini fuses because they give you a add a fuse right here. And of course you got the you got the wiring kit for the camera. And you also got the rear view mirror. It's a good looking rear view mirror. So there's all that. And then in box number two we have our camera. Which if you bear with me, you can open up box number two. Here's our camera, goes right behind the plate, and here is a sh shit ton of wire. Holy shit, that's a lot of wire. What are we wiring this camera to, a boat? Well, if you're ever worried that your card is just too long, this is probably the kit for you, because this is an absurd amount of wire. Oh my god, this is a lot of wire. Okay, so let's get this uh, install going. Things you're going to need for the F-150. We're going to be needing... Not that. And you're going to also need a splice, some splices, which you can get these same place you can get these on Amazon you can get these at your local auto parts store and what's really really nice about these and why I prefer these is you're gonna clip onto the wires just like so and then right there oh, let's see focus focus there so right there you'll add this and it will go right into it. This is really difficult to do with one hand. I'll show you guys as we go on. No big deal. But you can definitely need some splicers. I think it's really important that we begin to talk about these add a fuses. And as you can see here, they come in a lot of different styles. And it comes down to what your vehicle needs and which one of these will you be selecting. In our case, with the 2016.5 F-150, we're gonna go with the Micro 2 Fuse. Now, if you have a different vehicle, um, most cars from 2014, no, 2015, 2015 up, you're going to probably be in this department. Um, from 2001 to 2014, uh, you may be in either the mini fuse or the low profile mini fuse. Uh, this is actually the transitional period that they went. Um, there's no guarantee that that's going to be the order that you're going to need it. 
but for the F-150 you will be needing the Micro 2 fuse. And the way that you use these, if you've never used them before, is this is going to take the spot of the fuse that you would be tapping into. Now, the bottom plug right here is where you're going to take that fuse that you took out and you're going to put it right there. The top is the fuse for your accessories. I probably wouldn't recommend anything higher than a 7.5 for the top. I mean, uh, you could put a 10 as a max. The thing is, you don't want to be putting a 20 or a 30 up here because you'll never blow that fuse. In the event of a serious surge, that fuse will never blow. That circuit is just going to keep going, zap out everything you just did. So you want to put it low, but enough for your electronics to be safe. Same rule applies for all the other ones. Uh, old one here, new one there, and old one here, new one there. So that's a brief... Uh, get to know your add a fuse section. So the very first thing you're going to want to do in this install is take this mirror off. What you're going to need is a small little flathead. Now comes the tricky part. Bear with me as I try and get this camera in position. What you're going to want to do is there's a metal band right here. So what you're going to need to do is get underneath that metal band and pop it off. It can be a little bit tricky. Things you don't want to do, you don't want to go here and twist. Because if you put pressure on this, you're going to crack that windshield. So, let's see. Ford, I'm not liking you already. This isn't working out between us. I thought we were friends. Oh, so I don't know if you guys just saw that trick to getting the mirror off. Little tab up here. Stick the screwdriver in, gently pull down, stop, pull down again, stop, pull down again, it's off. Completely off. There it is. Got to fight with this friggin' metal band. So, now that we got it off, we're gonna wanna put the new one in and begin pulling this headrest so that way we can get the wires up and through here. So now I got my new rear view mirror. What you're going to want to do is get the wire tucked in like that and then just slide it on over. You can feel right there it just came to a stop and you're going to take an allen key this is a three it's a number three on a husky set so I believe that's three millimeters I don't know. I don't know how to use metric. I'm from America. Sorry. I blame us. So let's put this in here. Tighten it up. You'll feel it start tighten. Now you don't want to go Hulk strength, but you want to make sure it's in there. You don't want to be driving and have your mirror come jiggling off. That's that's in there. Very good. And see this wire. It's going to get hooked on to the hard wire kit, and we're going to go up, but I'm going to show you guys how to get this down a bit so it makes your life easier when you have to run the cables down through. And some people are going to say, oh, you know, you should be going that way because you're going to be going out through the engine. I have one major beef with that. Why are you going to cut a hole underneath your steering column through the rubber grommet into the engine bay just to run a wire when there's other ways to get wires out of your truck than going through that way? I, d I personally, this was my car, I don't want to be putting holes anywhere where the engine bay is. That's just not my thing. 
So I'm going to show you guys exactly where I plan on running this wire out. There's already a hole there, so I'm just going to use it. Um, and where I'm going to be getting my power, which in this situation is from this mini fuse box that Ford so kindly put into the uh, passenger side of the truck. So now, down with the headliner. Now what we're going to do is pull this off, just like that, push it off to the side, and what you can do is take a look up underneath and you will see that there is a little nut up there. And over here, reach behind, pull it off, get another little nut there. And here, pinch on the sides like this, just pinch, pull, we have another nut. What about there? Pinch, pull, and we have another nut. So what we're going to do is take these nuts off. This will come down freely. This will pull off freely. And then we can drop our wires down and get some electricity. Okay. So what I got here is a 930 seconds bit. Just going to go up here and start turning it. it should come off pretty quick. There it is, all off, put it right there, come over here, take this one off, oh man, this one got tightened by the Hulk. There it is, drop it over there. Down it goes. Look how easy that is to work with. Now these suckers are not that size. Let's try something a little bit a little bit different for these guys over here. Let's see. Try my usual 10 mil. Too big. Drop it down a bit. What is this? Okay, now we're going to take off the door handle, and that's a 10 mil. So we're going to go ahead and slap on our 10 mil. Take these puppies off. Just so you guys know, this is insanely hard to do with one hand, but I got it. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy right here. I'm just going to pause this for a second. Now that we got both the 10 mil bolts off, we're going to take our hand and we're going to go straight in this direction. We don't have to worry about airbags because there are no airbags in this particular model, in this spot. So just come straight. Now you're going to want to be careful because yes, there's a little tweeter down here. So you don't want to pull it all the way out and you'll see the cables. Let's go ahead and put that right there. Oh, how about that? Look at that, there is an airbag. How nice of Ford to put an airbag here. So this is how we're going to be getting down into where we need our electrical. 
we've got our headliner nice and down. So now what we're going to do is start running the wires through. And after we get the wires through, down in that direction, we're going to come down. We've got these nice little holes all ready for us. Look at that. Look at that hole. That's a ginormous hole. So that's just going to drop straight down and go right into where I need it. And uh, we'll take it from there. So now what I've done is I put the wire in. You're going to want to line it up however you want and just tuck it in. Pretty much you want to push the wire to this point right about here so it's just over this uh, little lip and it's sitting. You don't have to worry about the wires dropping down at any time. And I got them dangling right now just like that. And what I'm going to want to do, just make it a little bit brighter, what I'm going to want to do is stay on this side of the metal come down and then come behind the airbag and drop down. Now when I'm down here I'm gonna have to fish those wires out so time for me to start taking this apart. This is the door sill. I'm just gonna put your hand right here. You can get your fingers up underneath and give it a little tug. There you go. Door sills up. That wasn't difficult at all. Now this little guy. He's gonna be difficult. So you gotta get that. What I went ahead and did is I pulled the molding off. And how very nice of Ford to leave us this big old channel that comes exactly where the wires are going to be dropping down to. So let's get those wires dropping down and get them into that electrical box. Just remember I want to come behind the airbag. reasonable doubt to be that airbag didn't deploy because there was a wire in the way. Which, if you've ever been in a car accident and had an airbag deploy, let me tell you what, even if you were in the Incredible Hulk, I don't think you could stop that mother trucker from hitting you in the face. That thing hits harder than, than most things in life, to put it bluntly. Okay, so now for this part. Okay, so now for this part, I'm gonna run the wires. Got our video, dash cam. I'm gonna go behind the airbag. And then come on down. So behind the airbag. you're going to want to pull it all. You get no slack. Now what I recommend at this point is getting some electrical tape, tie it off here, then you don't have to worry about any of that cable in that direction ever getting loose. So let me go ahead and do that, and then we'll work down here in the electrical. So now we're down here at the electrical. I know what you're thinking. You're like, hey, wait a minute. 
you did something and you didn't show us how. I do apologize. It was very hard to do with one hand and I have nowhere to put this camera to get it. I mean, that's rocky gravel, so the camera would probably have sunk. Um, I did take this little guy off. Um, not much difficulty to take it off. You'll see it's just clips. What is difficult is that little clip right there is a son of a bitch. Because that little clip is hiding right there. Right here. So you kind of like have to pull this up in a way and put your finger in there and stick it. And then once you get that clip off, the other ones just pull straight out. And what you're going to see in here is the goodie box of Ford. And you see the ground. We've got a great grounding spot right there. And we have all of these nice little fuses. And our fuse, I've already did the math for you guys. Our fuse that turns on when the truck turns on is that number 30, that number 5, this 15, and that 20. Those 1, 2, 3, 4 fuses we have to choose from because we want all of our devices to come on when the vehicle gets power. Now if you live in a sketchy neighborhood, maybe Detroit, and you want to have the dash cam running 24-7, any fuse from that 30 up is going to give you full power. And what you're going to want to do in that case is just take one of those, maybe like this 30 up here, take that out, put the add a fuse, run the dash cam to that. But you're going to have to really, really make sure that you turn off that dash cam or have some alternate power going to this vehicle because that could end up killing your battery. Then you're going to be deep shit. Um, but in our situation, we, we, we want it to come on when the vehicle comes on. I don't anticipate anything happening to these vehicles at night. Um, so what I'm going to do now is work on this ground and put the add a fuse right there where that 30 is. So what we're going to be doing is putting the ground to our grounding point right here. Ford did an awesome job and gave us a nice clean grounding point. Keep in mind that after 2015 going all the way forward these trucks are nothing but aluminum so aluminum is a great grounding spot but uh, it can be kind of difficult to find an unpainted surface of aluminum in a vehicle. Um, so luckily for us Ford went ahead and gave us this one here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just back that out a bit. I think that may be at 12 mil bigger. Try 13 mil. That's it. So it's a 13 mil. Go ahead and get this. Got it. We're just gonna just gently loosen it. We're gonna have to go all the way out. And we're gonna want to wedge our little spot right here in front. So let me go ahead and get this off. You can just either use your nail or if you don't have nails like in my situation today, get a yourself a set of wire strippers. There you go. And what we're going to want to do is just wrap it up, put it right in there. So let me show you when that's all through. Now what we're going to do is locate the fuse that is off when the vehicle is off. And that 30 has power. 5 does not. 15 does not either. So I think we're going to be going to that 15. Just be sure, put the key in the ignition and turn it. There we go. That's where you're going to want to put your mini 2 add a fuse, right there to that 15. So we'll get that going. And then we'll uh, close this all up 
and check up what's going on upstairs. So this is what it should look like with the add a fuse put in. You can see here, went ahead and placed it. Uh, notice the direction because it's not going to go the other way around because that piece of plastic towards the bottom is not going to allow for the add a fuse to sit in there properly. This is the only way this is going to go in. So now that we got our uh, dash cam with the power it needs and we got the wires coming up over behind the airbag really really important everything else all nice and awesomely tucked away you don't have to worry about no wires running from your cigarette lighter all the way up to your dash cam you don't have to do shitty install like that and now what we're gonna do is get the pieces back together so you can see the little teeth on this they're just gonna sink right in just like that and then see it just went in literally all by itself and you just want to make sure it's nice and in airbag is where it's supposed to be uh, see you know what I just fucked up did I Okay, so make sure you get the seal over it. Let's see, there you go, looks nice, looks clean. And uh, start putting in these back in. At first you just wanna get it in by hand. That way you make sure you're not stripping these out. There you go. We'll go ahead and tighten those up. So, uh, I'll get back to you guys when I get up here. Get a little bit brighter. So I'll get back to you guys when I get up here. I'll show you how to get all those pieces back in. So now what we gotta do is get the headliner in. You wanna get this piece in first. It has like a little uh, hook to it. Just lift it up, get the hook in tilt back and there you go it's in the only thing you got to do is just put a little nut a little screw just rubber hand tighten first on swing this really only has one way of going on and it's kind of a little bit tricky to hand tighten this because it's so recessed so just go straight to putting it in You'll feel it. If, if you have a lot of resistance, you're probably doing something wrong. It should just go in pretty smooth. Just want to make sure everything is where it needs to be.
So there you go. Your brand new dash cam is installed in your brand new F-150. Now if you want to test out your camera, make sure it's working all nice and pretty. Get your keys. See how Ford just copied that shit straight from Volkswagen? Get your keys, put it in there. And when you turn it, dash cam should turn on. Look at that. Perfect. At the same time, when you turn it on, rear view comes on too. Both are getting power, everything is amazing. All we gotta do now is put our SD card in, program it, and that's good to go. Now, rear view camera folks, what do we gotta do now? Well, I'm going to show you that magical spot how to get it in and out the vehicle without going through the firewall. And that spot is actually... What is this? Holy shit, that... that someone's day. Alright, so that spot is actually right here. Right here. And this is the base model, keep in mind. If you have the higher trim models, you're gonna have other holes. But the base model has a hole right here, right underneath the seat. You're gonna just lift this up. And there is actually a washer in here. And that washer is going, here's the truck. That washer is going Right. right there. Look at that. Just pushes right in. That's how you're gonna in and out of this truck. Without going through a firewall, without worrying about poisonous gases coming into your vehicle. I know some people are gonna write, well, not really, no nope. shit. All right, just do it right. Do it the first time, run it through there. This also applies if you wanna put any off-road lights onto this truck. You can just always come underneath the vehicle, come right through here. You know where to get power, you know where it hooks up to. You have everything right here. So why are you gonna complicate your life and go on the other side of the vehicle? Okay, so I'm gonna start running my video cable through and I'll show you step by step from there. So here's the uh, plastic plug that I was showing you. I went ahead and drilled a hole right into it. That way I can get the cable right through and what I will do from the underside of the vehicle right before I finish my install is get a little bit of black silicone caulk and just caulk that up and then in the future if I want to run more wires through here I can just pull the caulking right off and just run more wires through later on if they want to sell the truck and somebody wants to put HID you know lights on the top you can just come right down through there and up and that's gonna be the easiest spot so now what I'm going to do is come in from underneath the vehicle. Let's see how this is going to work. So what I'm going to want to do now is come up into the truck. I think that's a good angle. Uh, that's a better angle. Nope. There we go. So what we're gonna do is run our wire up through that hole, get us inside the truck. There she goes doesn't take much wire to go up there and then you're going to take your plug and just plug it back up see that was it now 
you got your wire like this and what we're gonna do is run it across like that just kidding what we're gonna do is come up underneath the seats of the car and then up underneath the floors like so there's just one little tab right there if you got carpet this is gonna be so much easier this particular in the work truck is so narrow and so tight that it, it, this is probably the hardest that you can get so we're gonna run along this way and I'll show you guys when I get over here so here we are just got done running it right underneath no big deal and we're just gonna plug right in looks like there's only one plug it can go into so you got another plug left in case you want to plug maybe an Xbox 360 yeah right I think it's funny how they try and sell you on that concept that you're gonna have one plug left for auxiliary video so now that that's all hooked up what we're gonna do is get some electrical tape just tie it up and it's just gonna sit right there just like that it ain't gonna bother no one and now that that's in there we can get to running our cable underneath the vehicle all the way to the back so we went ahead ran the wire underneath the vehicle um, best way to do it in this situation is above the chassis just keep going up and under up and under uh, let me show you an example of that see the wire how it's just exiting out right over there and then I just ran it see it see how it's just riding right on top of the chassis that way it's nowhere near the exhaust it's just going in between all those little spots Maybe you can kind of see the wire right, right there. And I know you guys can see that wire. That's right there. It's just hiding. But no one can really see it from afar. Not even if you get close. And I got an assistant working with me, Herber. Thank you so much for helping me out. And going up underneath the truck, and what you're gonna want to do is hook up the power to the backup cam and here you got your positive and your negative your positive is going to be your power coming from the backup source your negative is just going to be a ground underneath the vehicle and we went ahead and found the best place to get power go right up underneath the truck you're going to pull the uh, hitch pull the hitch off and it's actually this wire right here it's kind of like a silver looking color so what we're gonna do that's where we're gonna clip on and that's where we're gonna get our power from right there uh, the ground is, looks like there's a lot of grounds here uh, there's a green ground right there so we can even ground right there and that's uh, I'll show you guys when we get there so here we are, it's all done, camera's in, and then up underneath the truck, show you guys where it's all spliced up. See the connection right there to the gray wire? And then you have the ground over here. And you're good to go. Here's the truck put all back together, and can see you can make sure you get that plug back in now this red cable that's just going to their to the reel but the plugs back in I went ahead and just put some uh, silicone right around it just to make sure no water gets in whatsoever and then I just ran the wire right on top of the frame uh, see you can see where I went loopholing right there you can just keep running that wire all the way back go above the frame you can see it right there and then you're taking it all the way to the camera 
Now as you can see we went ahead and replugged the hitch plug back into uh, the bumper and we tucked all the wires in just right above the uh, the hitch and they're all wrapped here. I zip tied them to a cable that was already there so that's a good little spot for them. See if I can get you. See, this is the uh, the hitch right here. So all the cables are. Uh, this is the uh, license plate lamp. So they're all wrapped up to that. And you guys can see here. There's the video cable just running on through. So if you're looking at the truck from underneath, clean install. No wires dangling around everywhere.